All right, guys, so I think I finally did it. I think I finally figured out how to make Sword Soul Bestial to where it's so consistent. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. For the most part, we won a lot of our matches. Earlier uh, today, I did about, on stream, like 10 matches where we were on like an 11 to 10 win streak and then uh, we changed decks and then we went right back to Sword Soul. So as you guys can see, we only lost like a few games, like one, two, uh, three, four five five games out of about like 20 something plus with the additional 11 that we went so about 31 and five and we have went ahead and got to masters two so really really consistent deck right so the number one question you guys may be asking what are you playing cal well first before we do that let me go go ahead and say thank you all for who's been supporting the channel and for all the newcomers that love sorcerer as much as i do um thank you all for joining the channel as well just hit that like button for me and subscribe button and and i would really appreciate it now um let's get into the deck build so my deck build i like to play a lot of two ofs i don't really like to play a lot of three ofs when it comes to um playing this deck i don't know why um I just feel like two is a really really good number for me right now and it's been as you guys can see pretty consistent so we do have the two at horrors we have the two maxis the two ash blossoms the one shatana we're playing three maxis two moyes and then two ecclesias along with two long yums one magna one sarnir one Druze, and then two ball drake uh we are playing two vashudas two ashunas two lubelians one protos and now for our spells and trap we're playing one regeki one harpies uh two pots two uh triple attack talents three um emergence one cross out and then finally two blackouts now for my extra deck i have been swapping back and forth between what i wanted to play and i feel like this is perfect for me as of right now because of the matchups that i'm running into so we are playing one yazi one crimson one boxia one draco one ryzen uh two chi chow we're playing one barone one um chaining one sinister one psychic and punisher two monks and then one shaman now at one point i was playing uh grimmer i stayed grimmer but uh i figured psychic and punisher uh it's just a better card as of right now because castir is not in the game and i was so used to playing grimmer because I, in irl when i played so so i always play grimmer over my psychic and punisher just because i if I go against Castira, I have an out to them. But this is the list that we have. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing these ratios, let me go ahead and break it down for you real quick. So the thing is, the way I look at it with Pot of Desires, if I'm playing mostly two ofs, I'm bound to always at least keep one card in uh my deck so usually i'm not a really big fan of desires but i know how huge desires is in source Soul, so that's why we're playing it now we are playing two copies of lubelian and the reason we're doing this is that way we can get access to either our bestials or we can bait out an ash because you guys do know sometimes you may just open up ecclesia and you may open up a taya right or you may open up an ecclesia and a tengi and there's sometimes where you go ahead and summon this ecclesia and it will get ash however now the lubelian is here and that can go ahead and eat the ash if they decide they want to ash it because most people will think that you're probably playing bestial dragon link or that you're pl probably playing bestial De uh brand despia or bestial um tier limits right so they're always thinking you're playing some form of a different bestial they never really expect the um the source hole plays so usually this is just really good as an ash um this is also really really good as an ash as well they're gonna probably go ahead and try to stop this because they don't want you to get access to drew swarm and they definitely don't want you to get access to ball drake right and the reason we're playing more copies of ball drake than the other bestials is because of the fact that this card is a uh pseudo interruption in a in a sense right so that is why another thing i really like about this deck is let's say you just open up like a bestial card and your opponent 
win first, right? You can summon out Abistrio along with a Adhara, make a Tengi pop the card on the field. And then from there, you just can go into other plays, which you can go ahead and get, get out a Moye if you needed to. So there's a few things that you could do. Now, the only thing I would probably change about my deck is I would probably play two Protos to make it a 41 card deck, but I don't have two Protos and I don't want to invest any more of my UR because we know that the new stuff is coming out. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into the replay so you guys can see what we were able to accomplish. All right, so round one, we are going to be going second and we're going against not um what do you call this deck again sprite completely forgot the name of this deck for some reason so yeah we are going against sprite sprite is then going to go ahead and uh summon out sprint sprint will go ahead and mill getting them a gigantic you know just regular sprite plays they are going to be locking themselves in now this sprite player was a really weird i thought he's gonna go into some melfi plays he did not i guess he just didn't have the resources to get into those plays so that's really good for us but as you guys can see they do get a decent enough board but we should be able to break through it and if you're wondering how it's because we have the bistros and not only that we have the talents so two of these cards are going to be huge for us so as you guys can see i'm going to go ahead and start out with lubellion first because i want to see if i can negate something and guess what they have a call by we're going to activate sonnier sonnier is going to banish our lubellion and because of the fact that we don't play branded beast or um branded regained we really don't care if our lubellion gets like banished it's really only there so it can give us a search so now by banishing that we get ourselves a drew swarm drew swarm i chose over the magma because of the fact if i need to go ahead and get rid of a card then i could use this i decided i'm gonna go and try to fake to go into battle that way we can get rid of the ip because i really wanted them to go, go into abramax that way i can force out something so i try to go ahead and use the emergence but the carrot does not bait on it which is interesting but guess what because they allowed us to go ahead and summon out um moye and then give us a token i guess they thought that we were going to go into something else but no we go into a barone because a level six and a level four tuner is even like an easy barone so we're going to go ahead and use uh baron or barone whatever you want to call it we're going to get rid of the carrot they're going to uh chain smashers we're going to go ahead and negate that so that card is out of here so we already took care of two cards off of one play and guess what by them doing that now we are free to go we can activate talents and we're gonna steal their avamax by stealing their avamax i will um go ahead and summon out drew swarm get rid of their ip go into battle and they know at this point it is ggs because they have no other plays that they can do so let's get into the next one all right so for this one we are going to be going second and they're going to activate branded opening we decide that we're going to go into maxi that real quick hopefully that it actually resolves and it does it's always such a nice like pleasure when it does resolve especially because you know that you're going to stop their plan but the thing about playing against branded despia is that like even if maxi resolves they don't really have to do much as long as they have branded fusion because at that point it's you're really only just giving two draws but luckily for us two draws is all we really need and we see that they toss out the maxi so that's going to be a huge sign for us that they probably have maxi themselves so let's see what we end up getting off of this second draw because getting an emergence was huge the mirror jade is going to also bless us with a adhara which is another like really really good card for us and then look at that we draw into a blackout so um we're going to start off with the ecclesia from there, we're going to use Emergence, grab the Moye. We're going to use Lubellion, see if we can try to bait something. Uh, they don't have anything. We're going to uh, use Moye. Now they decide they're going to Max C. Now at this point, I'm going to change Magna Hut, banishing their Saw in there. That way we can get a, another card onto the field. So no matter what, we are going to have two different synchros because the um, Ecclesia is a level four and then our token is a level four however they're going to mirror jade us so goodbye ecclesia which was a little odd from there we're going to use tip, trip attacks talent i'm going to look into their hand and look at that they have a cosmic cyclone 
So at this point, I decide I'm just gonna activate Vashuda, send that Mirror J back into the deck, grab me the uh, Vashuda back with the Adhara. And at this point, I'm like, okay, let's just floodgate them. I don't wanna give them too much draws because of Maxi. So we're gonna go into Crimson Blader. We're gonna draw one and we get a Drew Swarm, which is huge. Now by attacking and sending a monster to Graveyard with Crimson Blader, our opponent cannot normal or special summon level five or higher monsters their next turn. So it's like a little like pseudo floodgate, right? So anyways, they do get the regained off of the saw Um, I believe, I, I believe that's how they got that card. Or was it all? Oh no, they got it off the Albion. So from there, they're gonna use fusion uh, deployment. That way they can get themselves a Cartesia. And then they're gonna add back brand diffusion. We're not worried about any of this because they can't activate any of those cards because of the fact that like Crimson Blader just kind of locks them out. So at this point, they are going to go ahead and use Cartesia. They want to go into a Dust Dragon, so I immediately chain my Ball Drake, and they're going to go ahead and fuse, make themselves the Dust, like I said. And then from here, we're just going to get rid of the Dust by um activating ball drake and if you're wondering why did i decide i want to get rid of this card Be because by banishing it they can't banish it later so when we would like do like a, a summon off a, a monster's effect so yeah so now we're just gonna go ahead and attack for game and it's just gonna be ggs they just never stood a chance um they got maxied they got crimson bladered they got ball draked so yeah just ggs man all right round two and we are going to be going second and it looks like we are going against a stun deck so obviously inspect the border is on the field that card is super annoying we're gonna go ahead and use desires the dyers is going to draw me into an ecclesia which is huge we're gonna summon out the moye now by doing this we didn't activate anything so technically we still can go ahead and do a play we're gonna activate chi chow uh that is going to get negated by imperm but that is still fine because of the fact that all we have to do is go into battle now by going into battle we get rid of that card and now we can go ahead and activate effects so long yun let's piss the shuna um at this point we get a token and then i'm going to go into the one and only changing now if you're wondering why i went changing the reason is because of the fact that i know if they go ahead and get um dina onto the field we can at least protect changing or if they go make Mir Moon Mirror Show Dinah or something, we can go ahead and easily take care of that by just banishing a card. So here they go. They're gonna um, obviously summon out Dinah with Moon Mirror. We're gonna go activate the Chi Chow, negating that. And then we were going to banish the Dinah, which was going to get rid of both those plays. And we would have just kept doing that as long as we could. So GG's, we're taking care of stun decks. This deck is just really good. It's super consistent. Obviously not the most exciting replay, but you know, it is what it is. So as you guys can see, the deck is super consistent. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check me out um, and add me as a friend on Master Duel, you always can. The code is gonna be 035-303-054. And if you want to go ahead and join any of my um, viewer lobbies, just come down to the channel. We stream all the time and we just have a complete blast when we do viewer lobbies. But anyways, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Do not forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Peace.